By the end of this video, you will understand the difference between a mock, a stub and a spy, all of which are different types of test doubles which we use within unit testing. So we will understand when we'd want to use each of these different test doubles, how we would create them and also the benefits to creating them. So the class that we'll be testing is called newsletter sender and essentially it's just responsible for sending a newsletter and this newsletter sender will use two different services one called subscribers database and one called messaging engine uh, and both of these services are instantiated through the uh, constructor of the newsletter sender uh, so there's one method which returns void called send newsletter it takes in a string which is the subject and the first thing it does is create a list of strings which it gets from the subscribers database dot get subscribers method. So the subscribers database uh, class will typically be connecting to a database and uh, returning the list of uh, subscribers. So here we have the actual implementation of what it might look like. So it gets the connection through the driver manager. It executes a SQL statement uh, to get all the emails from the subscribers table. It iterates over the uh, over the result set and adds it to the subscribers list. It returns those subscribers. Uh, I'm just going to remove uh, all the implementation. It's not necessary for the purposes of this video. Uh, so if we go back to the send newsletter method, it obtains all the emails. It will check if the email size is zero, otherwise it throws this zero subscribers exception. And that's just a custom exception which we created, which extends the runtime exception. It just provides us a little bit more uh, specificity over what exceptions are being thrown from our method. And then finally, it uses the messaging engine to send an email, uh, which takes in that subject from the argument and then uh, uses the list of emails that we got from the subscribers database. There's no actual implementation for the send email method from the messaging engine class, uh, but otherwise in theory it would be setting the email subject, it will be setting who the email is being sent to, and then it will be sending the email. There's also a few other methods for the newsletter sender class. So we have the number of subscribers, which uses the subscriber database. It gets all the subscribers and returns the size of that list. And then we also have the two getters for the services. So we have the get subscribers database and the get messaging engine. So I've created this test class called newsletter sender test within the test Java directory. And before we start creating our test doubles, just verify that you have the correct dependencies with your build tool. So we'll be using JUnit and the Mokito framework. So test doubles are used to shield the test class that we're testing from their external dependencies. So for example, the newsletter sender depends upon the messaging engine and the subscribers database. However, external dependencies can also include any other kind of database, any third party softwares, or any other kind of APIs that our class might be using. So by shielding the test class away from these dependencies, we're able to purely test the functionality of the test class without any interferences from our other classes or dependencies. So the first kind of test double we're going to be looking at is called a mock and a mock is also known as a dummy. And the reason we would ever want to create a mock is when we have no intention of actually using that object. So I'm going to create a test to test the constructor of our newsletter sender class. So I'll be testing the constructor of the newsletter sender to make sure that it is assigning the subscriber database as we expect it to. And then I'll be using the getter from this class uh, to test that the constructor is appropriately assigning the subscriber database that we pass into it. So if we were to go about creating this test uh, normally, we would create an instance of the messaging engine, and then we would do the same for the subscriber database. And then we would create our newsletter sender by using both of these as the argument. Then we would use the assert equals method to make sure that the database that we're passing in, so subscribers database, is equal to the newsletter sender.getDatabase. 
Now if I run this test we should see that it passes. Okay, one point I'd like to mention within this test is that this messaging engine class is used but it doesn't actually have any place within the t within the test itself. It isn't actually used within the assertion or any other reason. But the only reason that we're creating this messaging engine in order to use the constructor of the newsletter sender. So this is where we can use the mock keyword to create a dummy version of this messaging engine. So instead of using new messaging engine, I'm going to use the keyword mock and then pass in the messaging engine.class as the argument. And we can see the mock has come from the Mockito framework. So when we use the keyword of mock, what will happen is that a nullified version of the messaging engine is created. So that means all the logic, all the behaviors, and all the properties uh, will return null. Uh, or they will return uh, the equivalent of null, which might be zero if it's an integer or zero D if it's a, a double value uh, or false if it's a Boolean. And by assigning the messaging engine as a mocked version of the messaging engine class, this instance that is being passed into the constructor and used for the test has no behavior and no properties that might otherwise influence this test. You could argue that you could just pass in null uh, for this constructor. However, if we were to extend the constructor to also use two arguments, uh, maybe two different types of classes, that could cause our test to fail, uh, as maybe that constructor might be doing uh, some other kind of behaviors. So that's why we're using the messaging engine as a mocked version within this argument and not just passing in null. The second type of test double is called a stub and we're going to use a stub for, for testing the number of subscribers method from this newsletter sender. And what we can see is that this method will use the subscribers database got dot get subscribers method and just return the size of that list. So for us to test this number of subscribers method we would actually be relying upon the database call that is made to get all the subscribers. Now the problem here is that our, our unit test is no longer testing just the functionality of the newsletter sender, but also the functionality of the subscribers database. A further problem is that this unit test now depends upon that database remaining perfectly still. So if uh, a new record is added to that database, our test will start failing because we, the test will be expecting a different number of rows to be returned from that database. A stub will be created, which will allow us to define exactly how an object responds to certain methods. And this way we can define exactly how our subscribers database returns and what list it should be returning for the purposes of that test. That way no databases are required and the dependency upon the subscribers database is removed from the test and we are controlling it from within that test. So when we create a stub the first thing we do is actually create a mock of the class that we're then going to change the behavior of. And then I will be creating a newsletter sender that uses both of these mocks. What makes a stub different from a mock is that a stub will contain certain instructions for how it should respond to certain method calls. And we would use a stub in this case because we would tell the subscribers database how to respond when the get subscribers method call is made. So the first thing I'm going to do is create that list of strings that we want the subscribers database to return to us. And then I'm going to instruct that subscribers database that whenever that get subscribers method call is made to return that same list. We will use the when keyword to define what method call is going to be made for the subscribers database class. 
and then we're going to use the then return keyword to define how this class instance should respond when that method call is made. So it's just this single line that makes a stub different to a mock because the stub has predefined responses to certain method calls, whereas a mock is completely nullified for that class instance. We can then write our assertion where we expect a value of three to be returned from the number of subscribers method call. So this number of subscribers will be using the subscribers database mock that is passed in and it will make this get subscribers method call. And we've told that get subscribers method call that when it is called, it will return this list of subscribers. And we can see that there are three different items within this list. So that size of the list should be three. The final type of test double, which we'll look at in this video is called a test spy. And a test spy is created using the spy keyword and it actually represents a real object. So all the logic behind a spy exists exactly how we might expect it from any other type of instance of that class. However, the only difference between a spy and a regular instance of that class is that we can stub some of the methods using the when and the then return uh, methods. Uh, so when would you want to create a spy? You would want a spy when you require both the logic of a class and when you also want to modify how one or more of its methods uh, behave. So for, for this example, what we want to do is test the, uh, the exception that is thrown from this send newsletter method. So what we can see here is that the send newsletter method will first check if the number of subscribers is equal to zero, which is also a method uh, within this class. And if it is, then it will throw this zero subscribers exception. So we use the spy keyword and we pass in the newsletter sender dot class. And the first question you might have is how is it actually creating this instance of the object? And it's creating it by using the no argument constructor but we can see that we don't actually have a no argument constructor. So what will it know to pass in as the arguments here? If I try to run this test now, so this test has failed and Makita has said, unable to create mock instance of newsletter sender. Then it says, please ensure it has zero arg constructor, which invokes cleanly. So instead of passing in the newsletter sender dot class, as the argument, we can actually create our own instance of the object ourselves and then just pass that in. So it will be like any normal object, but it will be a spy. So we can actually change the methods, uh, the method behavior slightly later on. And because we've created a spy, we're able to modify the behavior of that spy for when it calls the number of subscribers method. and we can tell it to return zero for when it makes that call. So if we look at how the spy is going to behave, it's going to call the send newsletter method. When it checks for the number of subscribers to equaling zero, this number of subscribers method has been changed using the when keyword. So when it is called, it will deliberately return zero and then it should throw this zero subscribers exception. And I'm going to change the test to expect that exception. Tutorial. And that summarizes this video on the differences between a mock, which is just a nullified class, a stub, which is a mock, but with the addition of being able to control some of the responses to some of the method calls, and a spy, which is just like any other instance of an object. However, it provides you with the option to stub some of the methods to respond in a certain way.